ver si puedo con mi, um, con mi lesson plan, a ver si puedo con acabar todo el libro. Fuera, eso fuera. Lo más importante es el desarrollo del alumno. Siempre. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Novel Tees, the life of a teacher researcher. Today is a very special day because I have a very special guest. All the way from Brazil, but studying at the University of Warwick, taking a master's degree on English language teaching, is next to me, Cecilia Nobre. Cecilia, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. You often create lesson plans, and you share those lesson plans on social media. Not only do you do so, also the British Council fan page. It's very open to sharing your lesson plans. My question to you is, first of all, why exactly are lesson plans so important? I think lesson plans are important because uh, it serves as a rough guidance uh, for teachers uh, to know um, where they're aiming um, at. And um, I think they should serve as a guidance, not as a script. You mentioned both the teacher's goals and the student's goals. What do you think is most important? Well, I think the student's goals are uh, more important than the teacher's goals because we're, we're teaching them, right? I think we're, we're planning the lessons for them. Yeah, not for them. That's a problem we often encounter in the classroom as well, that even though most teachers agree, that it's more important for the students to achieve their goals, we often look at, okay, the curriculum wants us to do this. So how exactly can we try to combine, in your opinion, lesson plans with our goals, with students' goals? The, the curriculum, I believe, doesn't give teachers uh, um, a fixed um, framework. You can, you can still choose some topics, and you can still uh, try to uh, use the students' uh, personal experiences, um, what what they like to do. So you can see actually both um, the, the curriculum also as a guideline, just as your lesson plan, mm -hmm. not as a yeah. script. I was going to ask you as well, um, because when you create your lesson plans, of course, you have goals you want to achieve, but then again, if we are allowing our students, or if we empathize with our students, just like you said, getting mm -hmm. to know your students better, mm -hmm. they are often more willing to share things in the classroom, not only about themselves, but also when it comes to questions about the, how the language works. And so how do you deal within the lesson plan, even though I know you see it as a guideline, that mm -hmm. but how do you deal with spontaneous contributions in the classroom? So when um, students are able to um, to engage um, engage with with the topic with the lesson uh, and in, you know engage among themselves um, they can come up with the most unexpected you know uh, contributions answers so and uh, I think there's there's room for creativity step out of our comfort zone and create a more student so what we can do as teachers when it comes down to spontaneous contribution is first when for example the beginning of the lesson or during the lesson we can allow students contributions as long as it is relevant for goals that we both as teachers and students want to achieve in the classroom mm -hmm. Because that way we take into consideration the curriculum and the exams. Yeah. But then again, there are obviously, that was a comment that I had as well on Instagram, that there may be shy students, there may be students not being really open to sharing their ideas, mm -hmm. or students who are very disruptive and they only mm -hmm. make comments, mm -hmm. you know, maybe to disrupt the lesson or spontaneous mm -hmm. contributions as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe with the beginning and the development of the lesson, when it comes to spontaneous contributions, we can use these contributions to achieve the curriculum and exam goals and the goals that we together have. Yeah. But then, if we want to involve the shy students and the ideas of all the students to achieve their personal goals, mm -hmm. what we can do is promote creativity in the classroom so that everybody can use what they have learned yeah. throughout the lesson. And I think creativity is also related to critical thinking when we promote, you know, um, 
and that leads to emergent language when when they can really think about um, what they want to express by by giving them freedom to create with what they have learned at the beginning of the lesson. That's where true personal learning emerges, basically. Mm -hmm. Because then, just like you said, with critical thinking or reflective learning, that's where we realize how we can put it into practice in our own way. Yeah. And that's where all spontaneous contribution is allowed, because we all are looking for individual ways of expressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So once again, we come to the conclusion that both the freedom to create and creativity in the classroom are key. Why? Because this way students are looking for ways to express themselves, but in their own unique way. As this happens, language emerges. Now why is language emerging so important for both the students and the teacher? Now that is going to be the question of the week. So please leave either a comment either on Instagram at the teacher researcher, on Facebook Novelty Vlog, or on YouTube the teacher researcher. Have a great week everybody and no, no se esqueça, un gran profesor, profesor nunca, nunca deixe de aprender. Or remember that a great teacher, teacher never, never stops, stops learning. learning. Take care.